Okay, good morning. Um, I thought since I've worked as a barista for years, I would uh, share like my favorite way to make coffee, uh, and that's with a French press. Um, I like it because you don't have to replace filters, uh, and I like it because it includes uh, what's called the crema, like the, the sort of orange, red, yellow, um, uh, oily substance that tends to float on the top of some different types of coffee and especially espresso. Uh, but it also doesn't require anything super expensive, uh, like an espresso machine. Like I, in my experience, when I've shopped around, I think any espresso machine that I could afford was not worth what I would pay for it anyway. Um, anyway, uh, so for the cup of coffee, for the size cup of coffee that I like to make, I use 20 grams of coffee. And I've ground this ahead of time. Uh, if you can grind your coffee fresh, that's obviously best. Um, so yeah, I'm hitting roughly 20 grams. And then... I'm starting a five minute timer um, right as I start pouring and I'm gonna pour, oh, first I'm gonna tear it, zero it out, and then I'm gonna pour 290 grams of water. Uh, and I'm gonna pour it slowly and work it around so that I'm agitating the grounds. And the ratio, I'm a little over, that's fine. Uh, the ratio you're shooting for between coffee and water is 14.55. And I did like a lot of trial and error uh, to get to that ratio. 14.55, um, so whatever amount of water you want to use, you multiply that by... 14.55 to get the amount of coffee that you want to use or vice versa if you have an amount of coffee or sorry water if you have an amount of water that you're about to use you divide that by 14.55 to get the amount of coffee that you need to make about the right strength and like flavor of coffee so we'll be back in about five minutes all right, so it's been five minutes. Whoops, excuse me. So I'm gonna take this off, push the filter all the way down. Push it slow, because sometimes if you push it too fast, it'll actually like shoot coffee out of the spout. Um, and then because the filter on this one is not super great, I'm using this, but hopefully you will have a have a French press where you don't need to use an additional little strainer. But as you can see, I've kind of worked out the exact amount of coffee that I want. Uh, and it fits the mug. But again, you can weigh the amount of water you're about to use and adjust the amount of coffee according to that ratio. Um, yeah, this is my favorite kind of coffee. Oh, I should mention, uh, I don't get this ground for French press or on a French press setting that you would see on a grinder or if you request like, oh, I want that ground for French press, they're going to ground it extremely coarse. I actually grind it at uh, what would be like roughly a, a drip grind, but maybe just a notch coarser than that. So if you're able to control the grind, that's what I would shoot for. but. I've also tried this with just coffee that you buy ground at the store and it works perfectly well with that too. Um, okay, I hope that helps. Hey, so we're gonna make cabbage rolls. This is a recipe that I learned when I was a little kid uh, and we made it all the time growing up and then I have kinda Altered my way of doing it slowly over time, and this is how I do it now. So, 
I like to use Savoy cabbage. Um, it looks like this. It's very wrinkly. It's um, it is it has got thinner leaves than just reg just like the regular. Uh, I don't even know if it has a special name, like the cabbage that you get at the store. It has thinner leaves and it's a bit greener, uh, which is why I like it. But you can use like the other the other kind. Napa cabbage, I think the leaves are a bit too thin and there's a lot of stalk that's perfectly good. Uh, I would rather use Napa cabbage for other things. But uh, we're gonna use big pieces of leaf. Um, so what we wanna do, starting with the outermost leaf is do your best to lift it off intact as much as you can. And then if you just bend it backward, the stem should snap and you'll get pretty much a whole leaf. And you just keep doing that as you go down. These rolls can vary in size and that's fine. Like you can make, you can, you can make some big ones and small ones and they can all go in the same pan and they all come out. So you're just gonna keep doing that and then when you're done, cut the spine out of the leaf. So this really thick part, you just wanna sort of, um, I like to sort of start at the very top in the middle with a knife and then run along one side of the spine and then holding it down still, go to the other side of the spine, run all the way down, and then set that aside. And you're gonna keep doing that with all of the leaves until you have big pieces of leaf um, all the way down to fairly small ones. Eventually you'll get to ones that are gonna to be too small to do anything with. Um, maybe I'll show that when I get to the end here. Uh, but just set them aside, keep them as intact as you can, and then uh, I'll show you what to do next with them. And then, yeah. All right, so my preferred potato is a red potato. I use it for almost everything, but you know, you can do, you know, it's just mashed potatoes. You can do whichever kind you want. But uh, I'm gonna peel these. Um, I like to hold them in my hand like this and hold the peeler in my hand like this. I find that you can, you know, just keep going along the length of it. And I am leaving bits of skin on this. I'm not completely peeling these because I actually like a little bit of peel in my mashed potatoes. But if you don't like that, just make sure you peel them completely and you can do it the same way. So that one I'm gonna call done. And then I only really need to cut it in quarters. And I'm putting it in, we're gonna put the potatoes in the water before you actually bring the water to a boil. And uh, then we'll start the mashed potatoes. Okay, so you can see we're starting to get to the smaller leaves now, which means that uh, the spines are no longer so thick. So once you get down to some of the smaller leaves, if you can pull the whole thing off intact, you don't have to bother cutting the spine out. You can just use that as is. Ready? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, okay, so the cabbage has been separated out into as many like big pieces of leaf as I could. Um, it, we may, it may end up that we made too many, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna take the leftover cabbage and try to make sauerkraut, but I've never really done that before, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, okay, so I have a big pot of boiling water over here, and I have a bowl of ice right here, and I'm just gonna fill that bowl with cold water. How you doing? 
and let's go ahead and set this just on a cutting board right here. I, I'm, I've got limited space and this bowl is kind of big. So I'm going to have to kind of just transfer this across. So anyway, I've got tongs, I've got boiling water, I've got a plate of cabbage leaves, and what I'm going to do is a couple at a time, drop these leaves in the boiling water, swish them around a little bit, pull them, swish them around in the ice water, and lay them down on the other plate. I'm just going to keep going with that process. And what you'll notice, especially with the outer leaves, you'll notice this, the color gets so much brighter, it almost immediately. That's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for not cooking them, but softening them to make them easier to roll things, to, to, to roll up. Uh, and, you know, brightening the color up a little bit. There we go. I've put a little bit of salt in this water. I don't know if it makes a difference in flavor, but it can't hurt. We're starting to get to our best leaves now. Check out how much greener that is. I hope it shows up on camera. Okay, last one. That's all our cabbage leaves. And we can keep rolling. All right, so I'm gonna dump this hot water out. And then I'm gonna take the potatoes and put that 
on the burner, put this to the side, uh, and cover it. And we'll have that going for a while. Uh, then, I'm going to move over, we can dump this too, to this meat. I actually ground this myself for the first time, I've never done it before, uh, and it worked great. I'll see if it makes a big difference in terms of how it tastes, but uh, it was pretty easy. Um, so this is going to be the meat mixture that goes inside of it, and this is where the flavor is going to come from. We're working with a lot of very bland ingredients. Cabbage and potatoes. We're putting tons of flavor in the meat. Whoops. Tabasco. Tabasco is just vinegar and red cayenne pepper. So if you're trying to put cayenne pepper in something and what you have is Tabasco, it works. I've put it in hot chocolate. It's great. This is dry mustard powder. It's like a spicy dry mustard. I really like dry mustard. This is Worcestershire sauce. And I'm throwing one egg in there. The egg binds it together so you don't end up like with it crumbling apart. And then there really is no substitute for mixing it by hand. I think that is a good texture. If, if it feels too soggy to you, if it feels like it's too wet and that it's not going to be nice and firm and hold together like this. Uh, you can add a bit of either breadcrumbs or cornmeal. I actually really like to add just a little bit of cornmeal uh, rather than like breadcrumbs or bre breadcrumbs or cornflake crumbs or whatever. I think that's a nice, you know, it's, it's already pretty finely ground. It's, it mixes right in, it absorbs some of that moisture. But I think this is actually good, and it may be because I ground this kind of coarse um, so that I would have bigger chunks of meat and fat in there. So yeah, that's going to be our filling. So, and this is our casserole dish over here. Uh, and I am going to start with the biggest and best leaves. Um, and place those in there, and then I can use the smaller ones to sort of fill in the cracks. Basically, we're cooking this as a casserole. It's going to fill the whole bottom of the, uh, the dish, uh, and then it's all going to bake in there. So, um, you don't need to, like, nonstick spray it or anything like that. It'll, it'll come right out. And you want to just sort of eyeball the size of the leaf uh, in order to determine how much meat will fit in there. And like I said, 
these can vary in size and it'll still work. And then you're just gonna wrap this, you know, as snugly as it'll go. And then wherever the end is, just place that down so that it'll hold it closed. And then you're just gonna repeat that process until that whole dish is full. I guess we can cut. All right. Um, so I'm making a little sauce to put over the top of this. There's the cabbage rolls, by the way. Uh, they're all rolled up. I sort of moved them around so that I could pack them in. Uh, and I basically just kept rolling them up until I ran out of meat. Um, so this sauce is going on top. You can kind of let, you can kind of mess around and do whatever you want with this. I'm doing kind of like a similar set of things as what went into the meat. That's Worcestershire again. And you can just apple cider or red wine vinegar. And I'm just gonna make this into a quick little sauce that's going to go over the top of it. It's going to be pretty liquidy, but it will dry out in the oven. All right, and we're just going to put a nice big like dollop of this on each one of those, sort of proportional to its size. Oh, I don't think I mentioned, that was tomato paste. That was just a six ounce can of tomato paste. And I have just like a little bit left over, so I'm just gonna kinda put it in between, add it to some of these other spots. And that's it. That's cabbage rolls. So those are going in the oven at 350 for probably a good 40 minutes or so, I would check them. Um, you can use a thermometer or just uh, cut one open, make sure it's cooked all the way through. And then, uh, yeah, then we're gonna continue making the mashed potatoes. Okay, uh, potatoes are, let me just check these. Okay. So I was able to push a fork through one of these chunks with very little resistance. So these are done. So I'm turning the heat off. You can strain these any way you want. I'm using one of these pans that has the thing built in. So I'm just gonna set that aside. Dump this hot water. And then put the potatoes back in the pot. And then I like to keep these pretty simple. The meat is gonna be super flavorful. This is like a, a nice base for that. I'm doing salt and pepper. I'm gonna add a decent amount of butter 
and I'm going to add buttermilk. I'm going to grind the pepper fairly fine so it doesn't have big chunks in it. This is all the butter I got left. I'm just going to toss the whole thing in there. Um, sooner or later, I will make a video of me making butter. This is buttermilk from butter that I made, and it's super good. I'm just putting a little bit in there, just enough to like make the whole thing fluffy and not too dense. I'll add a little bit more if I need it. And I actually don't have a potato masher, I just have a big whisk, but that is perfectly good because these potatoes are super soft. Potatoes melt the butter. And this week, I want everybody who sees this to at least once, hopefully more than once, give something to somebody who needs it without asking any questions. If you give somebody money, don't ask them what they're going to use it for. It's none of your business. If more people know that people have each other's backs, everybody's life will be better. taste for flavor. And that's super good. You can absolutely add whatever you want into this, like chopped up rosemary, garlic, anything you want. For this specific thing, I do like to keep it just simple, buttery, and just nothing fancy. But again, that's how you make mashed potatoes. You can do whatever you want with them and the process is the same. You can even use this same process to make homemade applesauce. And it's really, really good. I made it many times because I just couldn't stop eating this applesauce. Just same thing, apples instead of potatoes, a little bit of salt, some brown sugar, cinnamon, applesauce. Thank you. All right, it is probably about 40 minutes later, 45, and it's done. So that's what it looks like. There's quite a bit of oil in there, more so than before, probably because of the meat that I used when I ground it, um, but that's okay. That just makes it a comfy dish. So to serve it, I'm going to lay down some mashed potatoes. I'm going to lay down a bed of mashed potatoes. And then, actually, I think... Yeah, one sec. I think tongs will work best. I'm gonna pick a couple of these. Yeah, that looks good. 
looks good. These are super good. I know that this type of cuisine can seem super bland, but give it a try. Um, this is like actually kind of one of my favorite foods.